everyone. Welcome back to another Entrepreneur Truth Talk. Today, I have Marie Freisleben. Welcome, Marie. Hey, thank you so much for having me. So excited. Yes, <laughs> this is so wonderful. So let's just dive right in. Can you tell us how you help people and, you know, give us your title and all that fun stuff? But I want to know, yeah, how you are serving people. Of course. Um, so I serve people in a lot of different contexts. Uh, maybe it's a little bit because of my ADHD, but I feel like I tend to have my hand in a lot of different things. Um, I and, But it, I'm helping people in similar ways though, in just different contexts. So um, I am an art therapist and finishing, I'm actually in my last semester of grad school. So it's cool that I get to help people as a therapist um, in like mental health counseling and art therapy, but also I've been working pe with people as a coach. And in both contexts, I am helping people navigate their emotions and I'm helping them navigate being an empath. Um, and then one of the things that I really also love doing and I help people is I love having my hand in the community and I do a lot of art programming that helps serve the community through the Department of Youth Services here in Massachusetts. So all that I do is um, in the realm of helping people through the arts and emotions and gaining that trust and confidence in themselves to follow their purpose. Yeah. So, it's a oh loaded, my gosh. It's a question, but I, I feel like I try to do a lot. <laughs> you. It sounds like you're doing a lot. I didn't realize you're in your last semester of grad school. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. That is a big deal and a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm actually working on research right now around burnout um, and how like therapeutic tools such as our therapy and other mindfulness tools actually really help in aiding, mitigating those like overwhelming emotions and burnout, which is really cool. Oh, oh, oh. well, then let's <laughs> dive into that also because that's so cool. And I did see you had something where it was like intuitive art therapy. And I wanted to ask you about that because I love the idea of bringing the creative and the intuitive mm -hmm. together and the art. Like how fun. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And I have the joy of like working with kids from like ages six. And I've like worked with adults who are like 56. And it, what's so cool about art is it's this magical tool and it's one of the catalysts that helped me really tune into my intuition because it, when it comes to trusting ourselves, trusting our bodies and learning how to understand our intuition, we need to get playful and we need to understand and like express ourselves and process our own emotions and art becomes such a playful tool. And there's so many people that come to me and there's, they'll say, uh, I can't, I can't do art. I can't even do stick figures. I can't draw a straight line this isn't for me. And then I have them scribbling and we are scribbling like we're a child again and we're getting playful. And then we're doing these like responses to journal prompts. And you just watch these epiphanies come to life. Like even with kids, like they have these like, like amazing realizations or they learn how to like regulate their emotions. And then you, you do the same activity with a 56 year old and like the same thing will happen. So art is such in my opinion, I know I'm a little biased, but I think art is such a magical tool that helps connect you to your body and intuition because it's giving you a process when you don't have the words to use. Gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, art intimidates me. I'm not going to lie. Like if, you know, you give me some paints, I don't know what to do, but also, the way you said it, even if it's just scribbling or just getting it out, it feels less intimidating than maybe sitting in an office across from a therapist mm -hmm. and, and not knowing what to say or am I going to say the right thing, where in art, there is no right, right? Exactly. It's like, all is right. <laughs> all is right. It's all about the process and getting out of your head. Like so often, yeah. we're in therapy or we're in coaching because we're overthinking. We're overthinking about the decision that we have to make or where we're going with our life or what is our purpose. And we're all in our head. So art takes us out of our head and just allows us to be present. And once you're able to get present and you're able to just play, all of a sudden, that's when the answers start to come. <laughs> 
That is so true. I, you know, I'm a strategist, so mm -hmm. I had to work with my coach to put play self care mm -hmm. on my Google calendar, right? And in, a, in its yeah. own color, because yeah, that play and just being with yourself and your inner child is so important for me. I found that that's when I could be the most creative because I'm not overthinking. I'm just being. Mm -hmm. And it's and that's yeah. and that can be an uncomfortable emotion, just being just sitting with ourselves. How scary is that sometimes for people? And if you are able to find a way to play and find that level of comfortability of just being with yourself, allow yourself to be bored. Allow yourself to just not know in that moment. Understand that it's okay to feel uncomfortable and just sit in that because that's a part of being human. We can't avoid emotions. And a lot of people, we try, we we're like, this emotion seems difficult. I don't think I want to, I don't want to experience that. So I'm going to go do this and avoid feeling that. But in reality, we need to sit and feel it to move through it. Yes. Oh, such <laughs> wise words. Thank you. And how wonderful that you are able to work with children on mm -hmm. self-regulation because to learn that at six as opposed to 56, what a beautiful thing. I mean, it changes your life trajectory, I imagine. Yes. And I had, oh my gosh, there's one story that comes to mind. And I was working with a six-year-old and I was, and I do this, like I said, literally all ages. I love, and I will stand to the day I die on bilateral drawings. So what bilateral drawings are without like uh, doing a demo, you're simply putting a, a pen in both hands or a marker or a crown, and you are drawing with both hands at the same time. But what this does is it stimulates both sides of your brain, it brings you into the present moment, and it helps you just, it's a process of releasing. So I do bilateral drawings as a really great way to ground. When I was having six-year-olds get frustrated, we got into a habit where I didn't say anything, and I would just hand them two crayons, and they would go and scribble out their frustrations. And then they would come back and take a deep breath and be like, I'm ready to try again. And that was like, oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because it was such a great way for them to realize like, I need to get these frustrations out of my body. I'm going to go scribble and then I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to try again. And I was like, oh. yes, it was so cool to see. I'm like, you're sick. This I'm is worried. awesome. <laughs> It is awesome. And you know, I, I had this hit of like, oh my gosh, you could do that at corporate retreats. You could do that with everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. needs to take a little time out, go scribble, get it yeah. out. Yeah. It's such a great exercise. I love that. I've never heard of it before. So thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> Add that one to my Google calendar. <laughs> Add it. Yes. <laughs> I want to go back to empath because not everyone understands, you know, what an empath is, what that means. So can you just tell me a little bit about that? Of course. Um, I myself didn't know what it was. When I was a teacher, I would I, – there was days when I was a teacher, I would walk away from teaching and not necessarily anything bad would have happened. But when you're sitting and making art – I would hear stories. I would hear a lot of my students' stories and they always had like amazing stories to share, but they were heavy or they were emotional. And I loved having that space for them. But what would happen is I would walk away from teaching and I would be in my car driving home and I would be bawling. And I was like, what is happening? Why am I crying? Like, <laughs> like nothing actually happened. <laughs> Am I tired? Am I this? Um, and and then I learned um, that I was very much so an emotional and physical and intuitive empath. So there's different types of empath, but at the core of being an empath, it's you are highly sensitive to energy and other people's emotions. And sometimes you can physically feel someone's pain. Sometimes you can intuitively just know when something is wrong. Uh, and for me, I, I would feel other people's emotions super strong. And I also was an intuitive empath in the sense that I always received from a young, when I was a young child, I always received vivid dreams. And then when I mm. became older, I started learning to understand and interpret and use my dreams as a tool to help me navigate and make choices. So it's just, 
at the core, it's just being highly sensitive to energies and being able to read energy in different yeah. contexts. Yes. Okay. So we have that in common. I am so sensitive and I, yes. And when I was an educator, yeah, you go home and you just, you yeah. take all their energy and all their stories and you just want to save them all. And mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, that's what, and you mentioned grounding earlier and I would go stand in the grass mm -hmm. after a day at school just to, you know, give it to mother earth because I couldn't take it. So how do you ground? Besides art, of course. Besides art. Uh, I have so many different tools. I, I love that you actually did that when you were a teacher because I actually had no tools for grounding when I was a teacher, and that's probably why I was so emotional. Um, and I used escapism a lot, too. I was, I was a little bit of a partier in my 20s. Um, <laughs> we all were. Yeah. So, um, But now I, I will ground in several different ways. So if I'm not doing art, I do EFT tapping. That's a big go-to for me. Um, mm -hmm. Breath work. If I'm in, I'm a, a, hold on, let me back up. If I'm at home, I will go to like using water. So hot showers or just being able to change your body temperature. They often say that uh, I have this conversation a lot with my supervisor. Uh, the same thing you would tell a toddler when a toddler's having a temper tantrum, you either change their, you change their body temperature by putting them in the shower or the bath, or you take them outside. So it kind of, the same kind of goes for adults. You either need to like change your body temperature by like taking a shower or a bath or take yourself outside. <laughs> and I think that's like the easiest, like through and through uh, good method <laughs> when it comes to grounding. Take yourself outside, feel the sun, feel the, your feet in the grass, take a hot shower. But then I also, like I said, I'll do EFT tapping, which is emotional freedom technique. And it is just like, based in uh, Chinese medicine, and it's all about tapping on meridian points and helping you, you process your emotions. Um, I also will sometimes just sometimes it's a good friend that I call and I have a good conversation. Sometimes it's listening to music and dancing. Sometimes it's like lighting a candle and burning some sage and just like being able to take some breaths and do a quick meditation. But I think it's so important to have multiple tools in your toolbox because you need to use different tools at different times. So there's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Light the fancy candle. I yes. just heard that the other day and I thought, oh yeah, I never do light my fancy candles because I don't know why. Why not? I literally yeah, have, that could be grounding. I have my honey crisp scented uh from Ooh. Trader Joe's. <laughs> it's apple. Yeah. Honey crisp yeah. apple. So good. Perfect for fall. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So you have some coaching coming up, one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is newer for you, and I'd love for you to share. Of course. Yes, I would love to share. Uh, so like I said, I work a lot with emotions and with emotion regulation and helping people navigate being an empath. So I am opening up some spots at the end of October to do some more one-on-one -on -one coaching, and it's going to be an opportunity to really learn how to navigate your own emotions and be able to have, A, the support, B, learn how to tune into your intuition because it is a superpower. Your empathy is a superpower, but it often comes off as like, I'm too emotional. I can't do this. And that's not true. You just need the tools and you need the support. And it becomes such a superpower that I've been able to just hit all these milestones in my career once I learned how to navigate being an empath. And I think that's the important thing to realize is that once you harness that superpower, anything's possible. <laughs> yes. So that's yes. There's no need to hide it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's wonderful that you'll help people with that. Great. So where can people find you? Uh, right now, I really respond a lot to people through my Instagram. So they can uh, find me at Intuitive Arts with Marie on Instagram. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Marie. This was such a great conversation. I love talking empath, intuition, art, all of it. That was fun. Thank you so much. This was awesome.
Yeah. Thanks for being here, everyone. And join us next time for another Entrepreneur Truth Talk. Bye. Bye.